Hi, I'm Mike Sullivan. Welcome to Guitar Tech, how to do it yourself. Hi, Gospel Guitarist here. Uh, had a inquiry a little couple days ago about a gentleman that wanted to bypass his Vox amplifiers effects and um, it kind of inspired this video. Um, I know when I got into uh, the guitar processor scene about you know 15 years ago it was all new to me because when I used to play as a kid all we had was stomp boxes and wah wah pedals. <laughs> um, so all the ins and outs and everything um, can be mind-boggling sometimes but um, what I want to do here is show uh, three different ways that you can use a uh, in this example a floor processor um, only two of them are really valid the third one will work which I'll talk about but it's not something you'd want to take on stage um, what I have here is a Roland JC120 amplifier it is a true stereo amplifier meaning it has completely separate 60 watt amplifiers and speakers okay so it is an absolutely separate left and right okay it's not faking anything most of your processors also can come out in stereo as well as mono so how would we use these well the boss me50 i have here isn't technically a guitar processor per se but more of a multi-effects unit that's why they call it a guitar multi-effects unit um, and which I'll get into later I'll show up talk about the difference there basically this is designed to be used in front of your guitar amp so what you would need to do in for that is simply run your guitar cable from your guitar to the input of the floor unit that you're using which technically would obviously not be on top of your amp <laughs> this is strictly for illustration purposes so you gotta pretend this is out in front on the floor somewhere um, at the front of the stage so your guitar would come into the effects units input and then typically you would run out the mono side and then run the other end of the cable to the guitars um, input on the front of the guitar amp okay so that's how you would typically use it just like a big stomp it's just a big huge stomp box is all this is Okay, so that's one way you can run run the effects unit. The other way that you can run the effects unit, um, especially with this amplifier, is a four four cable method. And some people go, "Well, it's a four cable method." That was my question too. I had no idea <laughs> what a four. It's like, boy, isn't that kind of redundant? Just put it in the, out in front, you know. Keep it simple. Two cables will do it, right? But you get more options if you do things a different way. Um, <clears throat> distortions sound really good in front of an amplifier but your choruses and delays um, sound a lot better when they're run through the effects loop of your amp so when you use a multi-effects unit like this you're just kind of stuck with everything being in front of the amp um, it doesn't sound horrible but it does sound better when you when you use it in the effects loop and it doesn't change the distortion all that much but it does affect the other effects so with the four cable method you're going to want to plug your guitar cable coming from your guitar and straight into the amplifier's input on, on like channel one of your amp let's say and so in the back of the amp what you would do is you're going to run a cable from your amplifier's effects loop send and that send signal is going to go through your cable to the input of your effect unit. Now, because I have a stereo rig here, you can also do this with two amplifiers if you want. You would connect your left and right, or you can just go mono, okay? But you can go left and right out to your effects return on your amplifier. So now what's happening is your guitar is actually using the front of the amplifier's preamp okay so it's still being used and then once it passes all your tone controls and volume controls on your amplifier it goes into the effects section comes out of the send of the effects section and into the effects unit okay and this could be a rack unit you know um, maybe you just have a something like an alesis you know midi verb in a rack 
Um, so you could, this could be literally anything. It doesn't have to be a floor pedal. So you go into the effects unit and you shut off and control the effects with your MIDI controllers or however you're going to control your unit, which comes out in stereo, returning to the amplifier. And then it sends it to the power amp section from there. And your amp, just you have everything about your amp. Everything's still intact, okay? So this is a four cable method. As you can see, you got one going from the guitar to the amplifier. You have number two going from the effects send to the unit's input. And then cables three and four coming out of the unit into your stereo or into two amplifiers um, in mono, however you want to work that. So this is uh, solution number two that you can use. And I like this one. Um, it, it offers different um, approaches on my amp, and uh, it's not available on a lot of amplifiers, but on a Roland um, unit, my JC120 has a series parallel switch, so I c it decides how I can run this unit. So it's either going to be in line with the amplifier, or it's actually going to run parallel to it. And if I run it in parallel, it's really cool because I can set my distortion unit on and then use the volume pedal to take this unit, unit in and out of the signal path. So you can actually do a morphing from a clean tone to a distortion delay tone just by moving the pedal. Um, and, and it just sounds really cool to do stuff like that. But you have to have it wired in parallel in order to do that. So it's a nice option that this amplifier has. It also has a, a level where I can set the level of the unit coming in. And hopefully your amp will have that. If not, they're usually self-adjusting in some way. Okay. Scenario number three. Number three is when you take your guitar cable from your guitar and you run it into your input of the unit. And the unit is now feeding into the effects return of the amplifier. Now what you're doing when you do this is you've completely bypassed the preamp section of your amplifier and you're only tapping into the power amp in, within the amplifier. So none of your controls on the front of the amp are going to work. None of the level controls, tone controls, none of that is going to do anything at all. Um, <clears throat> by doing this, I would be tapping straight into the power amp. So basically, I'm using the, the whole amplifier as only an amplifier and speaker. And I'm not using the preamp. This is now my preamp. I've completely replaced the amplifier's preamp with something else. Um, I have a Digitech 2101 and a Boss GX700 guitar processors. Um, one's a modeler and the Digitech is all tube. And I really like tube distortion. So when I run that unit in this kind of a connection, I get really nice tube tones through a solid state amplifier. <laughs> and it's, it, it gives me a nice flexibility. So that's option number three. Guitar into the unit or your rack unit's input come out your unit or your floor unit or your rack units, um, stereo outs into the effects return on your amplifier. The effects returns on any amplifier is going to directly feed into the power amp section of that amp because it always feeds after the preamp. So that's option number three. So this is just a, a quick video on how you can set up these different scenarios. I would suggest that you play with them on your own and see which, which things you might discover that you really like about them. I would suggest a really long cable to run to a unit on the floor because <laughs> you're going to want this out in front. So you're going to want you know 25 foot cables or so if you are performing out on stage somewhere. So and make sure that these cables and your guitar cables are all long enough for, for the runs. So that's it on this video on three different ways you can run your effects unit in front of the amp, in the effects loop, or straight into the power amp. So I hope that's helpful. Um, experiment and have a good time. So until next video, have a good day and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Well thanks for watching and see you next time on Guitar Tech. How to do it yourself.